I want to uh, check the resonance on this cabinet. So I'm trying to think of a good way to do it. I've been messing around with the exciters a little bit and I thought what better way than to get an exciter. This is a Dayton 8 ohm 25 watt exciter and I got it so that it's blank on the back so I could just put tape on it and move it around the cabinet. So basically what I want to do is find out if I put an exciter on my speaker cabinet, will it make music, right? If it's uh, highly resonant, then chances are it will. So that's what I'm going to try today. Uh, now I'm actually going to do this inside the cabinet with the drivers in place because I want to simulate what it's like as an assembled cabinet. Um, I may wind up going around the outside too just to see what happens but really what I'm most interested in is trying to replicate any of the vibration from the woofer that is possibly causing any resonance in the cabinet. So that's the plan. So let's get started. All right, so you're right here with me. Cabinet's plugged in, and I've got the exciter hooked up. Let's play some music. So there you go. So it's, it's at a pretty loud volume, and you can definitely hear it coming out of the back panel because that thing's attached to the back panel. Like right here, it's vibrating. Now as far as from the front goes and the sides, top, definitely not so much. I don't know about inside of this port. So what you're listening to is the exciter mounted to the back panel, the most vulnerable panel on here, on the inside. It's turned up to the negative 10 dB, and this is what we're hearing out of this cabinet right now. And, and the majority of that's coming from the back. It's about as loud as I really want to go with it. And I think you can tell by the sound of my voice that it's not real loud. I mean, I can hear it, but for as loud as this thing is, it should be screaming. So it's pretty good. And what I'm hearing out of it is very... It doesn't have a whole lot of range to it. Let's throw on a frequency sweep and see what happens. And this is... At negative 10. So 
but it's howling pretty good. Now we're getting to the point where we would be rolling off the woofer. Okay, we'll stop it there. We're never going to be up that high with the woofer. Alright, so what have we learned so far? Basically that it does make noise. It resonates through that back panel. It doesn't seem to resonate through the rest of the panels though. Now, that being said, if we put it on a different panel, we could see if it resonates. So I think for the rest of these tests, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect this cable because I don't think this helps as far as rattling around. I'm just going to leave this pigtail on there and just try to connect the wires, hold them tight with my fingers and Start up the frequency thing and see what happens. First, I'll need to stick some more tape on here. And I know I should be putting it across this whole thing, probably give it more, um, you know, more surface area to vibrate, but I don't have a ton of this tape, so. I think that we're gonna still see whatever results we need to see going right across the center of the exciter there. So it should be sufficient to at least hear something. All right, where are we gonna put it this time? Maybe on the top. And maybe we'll even get to see this thing in action. Nothing yet. Just past my crossover point. Good enough. All right, so it definitely makes racket. Let's try another vulnerable panel. And this time let's measure it to see what the actual decibel output is. And we'll, this time we'll attach it to the front. You know, a lot of speaker companies, they go to a lot of trouble to make these front baffles extremely thick. Um, you know, obviously this panel is the one that's facing out. Let's see how much racket it makes. thing on the end is my uh, is actually my washing machine going where do you hear it
is uh, ringing, you could definitely make some racket. I could see that. All right. Well, there you have it. It does make racket. Not a ton, but I think that it's worth trying to make the uh, resonance go away for sure. So that's, uh, I guess that's a step in the right direction is finding out for sure that actually we can excite the cabinet and make noise. It's not a lot of noise over a broad area, but it, it is there. <clears throat> now, whether or not the woofer can cause that, I mean, it's hard to measure that, but I highly doubt that this woofer just moving in and out, you know, it's mounted in a basket, it's got suspension, it's vibrating, it's creating sound pressure and, you know, waves and producing frequency, but I don't know if it would be as intense as actually attaching an exciter to it. Because if you think about it, you could play a speaker next to anything and whatever it's next to, I don't think you'd hear it singing. Now, I've, from what I understand, uh, people put sand in their um, speaker stands and things like that. Uh, you know, put their speakers up on bricks and all kinds of things to try to eliminate any possible resonance uh, through the speaker stand. And so I guess it is, you know, probably a thing, probably audible. Um, I just was messing around with a project last week where I built these speakers um, out of a precision port base reflex tube box. And there's an exciter on the front. Now these things, you know, in this cardboard box, I mean, it actually sounds like a speaker. So it definitely needs some tuning, <laughs> but it works like a speaker and it gets almost as loud as a regular speaker too. So with this being a more powerful exciter, um, I would think that we should be able to hear it even louder uh, if this was a, a huge problem. 